In this video today, I'm gonna to share with you a social media plan for real estate agents to make $20,000 a month. Let's start with Facebook. The first thing you wanna do is cross check everybody in your sphere of influence to make sure that you are connected on Facebook with every single person that you know. Next, you're gonna to wanna to engage in different Facebook groups that are relevant to your niche. If you have certain interests, whether it's soccer or baseball, or if you're involved in a certain specific community in your local market, get involved in that Facebook groups so that people see you engaging and being active and posting in that group regularly. Find a real estate investors Facebook group in your local market. And if there isn't one, create a local real estate investors Facebook group. Pay attention to the Facebook groups in your local market. If you live in Willow Grove community and there's a Willow Grove community Facebook group, make sure that you are paying attention to what's happening in that group because every so often somebody's going to ask a question of who somebody might know that's a local neighborhood expert and you want to make sure that you are well known in that community who are you so that people will tag you in that post and or at least you will see the post so that you can reach out to the person who is looking for help in the real estate space pay attention as well to buy and sell groups on Facebook especially for rent Facebook groups and somebody's trying to sell their house for sale by owner, they might just post it randomly in five different Facebook groups to see if they might find somebody that's gonna fall onto their lap and buy that property. That could be a hot lead. You don't know if that person actually has a real estate agent or if they're looking to put any serious effort into selling it by owner, there's a very good chance that if you reach out to that person, you could have a hot new listing that very same day. And of course, engage with with the people that are within your sphere of influence. Make sure that you like and comment on their posts. And if there's a big serious life event that's happening for them, reach out and send them a personal message. Don't be afraid to communicate on Facebook. Sometimes it blows my mind that people will accept hundreds and hundreds of friend requests, but for some reason they won't have conversation with any of the people that they connect with. Social media is exactly that. It is there for us to engage and socialize. Send them a personal note even. If they've got a personal event in their life and you send them a personal note, that will go a long way in building those relationships. And my philosophy is you should post around four times per week and rotate the content you put out there. Once a week, put something maybe personal related or family related. And then the second post you're gonna to wanna to put out is something maybe more lifestyle related, whether it's sports that you're interested in or maybe it's food, maybe it's travel. And then next, you wanna put something educational out there that's real estate related, whether it's real estate tips or the real estate market update. And then the fourth post you're gonna to wanna to put out is some sort of listing or maybe even a video that is potentially a property tour for a listing you have or a listing at the company that you work for. And then rinse and repeat on a weekly basis so that people are getting a good mix of business and personal content from you. There's also a good variety. And so you never need to think about what to post next you always know that because it's on rotation the next post I'm gonna put out is this idea for Instagram you want to do a lot of the same things you're gonna to want to cross check with all of your sphere of influences you're still gonna to want to post all of the same things on Instagram however you might modify slightly how you post things on Instagram you are gonna to want to focus more on video related short form content on Instagram because they are trying very hard to compete with TikTok. And now if you post on Instagram Reels, you have a very good chance of getting great engagement with people who don't already follow you. On Instagram, however, you do have some good advantages where it's a lot easier, I believe, to network and communicate with other business owners in your local market. So it's a really great app to engage with local businesses and like and comment on their posts and maybe even send them a personal message. If you're one of the few real estate agents that supports that local business, that is a really great connection for whoever is working that account behind the scenes. You can reach out directly to that person and start developing relationships there as well. You also have hashtags that are local to your city and you also have the location feature itself where you can follow posts in your local market
market and you can like and comment and engage in the posts regularly that come up in your local market and you can also post and tag to the location for your local market so that other people that are engaging in that same thread or in those same hashtags will see your content come up when you post it as well. I personally believe that Instagram is probably the best, most well-rounded platform because you still have the messenger feature, which is actually still popular on Instagram. It's a great platform for video related posts and photo related posts, which I believe are more powerful on that platform than most other platforms. And then as well, you still have the ability to use their search feature to find things that you are looking for. And it is a very popular app as well. Are you sure? most people now are using Instagram. Snapchat is another app that you can use. Anything that you're gonna post on your Instagram story or on an Instagram reel, you could technically repurpose that and put it on Snapchat. You can also take the contacts in your phone and cross check them on Snapchat to make sure that you are connected with as many people as possible that you already know. And even if you don't get as much reach on Snapchat as you do on some other platforms, what I have noticed myself personally is that there are people on Snapchat that I will connect with that I wouldn't have connected with on any other platform. For whatever reason, people within my sphere of influence are connected with me on Snapchat, but they don't have an account on any other platform. So just adding this to your arsenal will definitely connect you with people that you already know so that you stay top of mind to every single person you possibly can within your network. It's also a really great app to speak speak candidly with people in a very casual, laid back type of environment. When you send somebody a message on Snapchat, it's genuinely like seeing them on the street and saying hi to them, at least I feel. And it's not a written record in history, so it's not like you're striking up a conversation with them to talk about business. You might just be saying a friendly hello. Snapchat also has the best filters if you wanna do some sort of selfie related story post on Snapchat and as well, if you create content through Snapchat, you can download it and repurpose it to other platforms as well. LinkedIn, in my opinion, is the best business to business platform. It is one where if you were looking to connect with the CEO of a big company and you were to phone that company to try to contact that CEO, it would be almost impossible to get through all of the front desk people and all of the gatekeepers when you phone directly to that business line. However, if you look them up on LinkedIn, you can send them a message and it is likely that CEOs of big companies will actually respond to your messages. So I personally believe, and I have personal experience based around this, that reaching out to other business owners for opportunities to create business referral relationships has been a very key contributing factor to adding top quality people to my sphere of influence. And I can honestly say, I will usually account for five to 10 deals per year from LinkedIn. Wow, wow. Whether it's come directly from a new relationship that I've built on LinkedIn or somebody who has become a part of my sphere of influence as a result of me networking on LinkedIn, who is now a long-term past client and or referral partner. It's been a super, super powerful resource for me. And the cool thing about LinkedIn is that people know that you're there for business. And I think of it as an online resume that just so happens to have a chat feature attached to it. And you can also post to get your content in front of these people. And what's unique about LinkedIn I find as well is that people are a lot more likely to engage in text related posts. People read articles on LinkedIn all the time, which is very uncommon on other platforms. But I will say that video related posts and photo related posts also do perform well on LinkedIn. So make sure that you add LinkedIn to a part of your networking and social media strategy. The other nice thing is LinkedIn has no limits to the number of people that you can connect with. Similar to Instagram, there's no limit to how many followers you can have. On LinkedIn, I, there is a limit, I think, but it's tens of thousands of connections that you can do on LinkedIn. But I think people are a lot more likely to accept a connection request than they are to follow you back when you follow them on Instagram. 
TikTok is an exceptional platform to add to your arsenal as well. I believe TikTok is the best video app for short form content. It's also the best video editing app if you're looking to put out short form content because you can still download content that you've created on TikTok and repurpose it to your other platforms as well. It's also the fastest growing social media platform today. It's also created trends all over social media today. So if you want to know the latest and greatest of what's happening, go to TikTok. Don't get me wrong, it's also the worst time suck. If you get caught up in the algorithm and different engaging types of content, you can lose a lot of time on there. So you need to be strategic on how you utilize this app. But once you find your niche or once you find your local market engaging through different hashtags, you will find that you can build a community on TikTok. And I still think today that you would be an early adopter. And yes, it's a younger demographic on TikTok, but there are people in your local market who are utilizing TikTok and if you get involved in and engage today, I think that you'll be ahead of the curve and you can build a platform that will stand the test of time as you grow throughout your real estate career. YouTube, in my opinion, is probably the best use of your time long term. It is also probably the most daunting task out of all the social media platforms to engage with for a number of reasons. I think a lot of people are afraid to go on video in the first place and then it also takes a lot of time to record longer form content to make sure that you edit it properly, make sure that you follow all of the steps required to post a video onto YouTube and then to stick to it consistently long term. Yes, it does take time, but I will say if done correctly, you should be able to post a video onto YouTube and have that perform for you for years and years and years and years. I've heard people say that when you post a video on YouTube, it's kind of like hiring an employee that works for you forever and you only have to put in the work once, which I do believe is true. I've just started with my YouTube channel. I wish that it would have got involved earlier than I currently do now. And full disclosure, my YouTube channel is more geared towards real estate agents than it is to buyers and sellers. But if you wanted to build it more for buyers and sellers like I originally did early on, there are a few video topics that you can post videos on, such as five things to do in Saskatoon, top five neighborhoods in Saskatoon, top five restaurants in Saskatoon, top five schools in Saskatoon, top five outdoor activities in Saskatoon. Become the Saskatoon expert or of course, whatever city that you are involved in. There's also some top performing video topics that will work in any city that people are always searching for, especially if they're looking to move to your area, which are as an example, the cost of living in Saskatoon, how to sell your home by owner in Saskatoon, popular population growth of Saskatoon and or the pros and cons of living in Saskatoon. You might ask, why should I talk about how to list and sell your house by owner? Now, if somebody's searching for that, they're looking for how to sell their house. And if you do a great video showing all of the things that you do to help sell a property and they get through that video and say, oh my goodness, that is a lot of work. I don't know if I can do all of that. Maybe I'll try it for my own on a little while and then I will actually hire professional or maybe they will be overwhelmed by the amount of work involved and just reach out to you and hire a professional in the end anyways. So hope this video was valuable to you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'm curious what did I miss from this video and or what would you like to see next in an upcoming video. Thank you for being here today and we'll see you on this video next.